please hit subscribe. This problem appears at the 2018 physics questionnaire of the qualifying examinations for applicants for Japanese government or MEC scholarships for undergraduate students. The answer key and the original questions are linked in the description. Problem 5 of 1. An observer is moving away at a constant speed of 5 meters per second from a speaker which is emitting sound waves at a frequency of 660 hertz. The sound speed is 330 meters per second. When the sound source S and the observation point O are located as in this figure, what frequency of the sound will the observer hear? Next, we also want to review the Doppler effect. So the Doppler effect happens when the distance between the source and, or rather the source of the wave and the observer of the wave is changing. So if the distance is changing, we observe a Doppler effect. What that means is that if there is some speed either of the source or of the, of the observer, we will see the Doppler, we will see or we will observe the Doppler effect. If the source and the observer are moving apart from each other, they're moving away from each other, then we observe the new frequency. The observer actually observes the frequency to be this. That's just the original frequency times this ratio here. This one is the original speed, the speed of the wave from the source. That's Vs. And U is the speed at which they're moving apart. Now, if they're moving closer to each other, this is the frequency that the observer will observe. What changed is just the sign here. The sign here is now minus. And you will notice that what this means is that this frequency is actually greater than this frequency. And so if they're moving, if they're moving closer to each other, the, the pitch of a sound, for example, will be higher if they're closer. If they're moving closer and again that's because we have a minus sign here and here we have a plus sign which means that the pitch will sound lower if the the source is moving away from the observer and of course if they are stationary if no one is moving so u here is zero and if we do that substitution we get that the observed frequency is the same as the source frequency for this problem, the observer is moving away from the source, and so that tells us that the source and the observer are moving apart. And so we use this equation here. So the frequency as observed by the observer would be given by this. That's the sound speed, speed of sound over the speed of sound plus the relative speed between the observer and the speaker. So we need to find this ratio and multiply that with the original frequency of the sound. The frequency of the sound is given to be 660 hertz. The speed of sound is given to be 330 meters per second. So we are left to find this U here. This is the relative speed between the, the speaker and the observer. Now to find that, we notice that this is not that the distance between the speaker and the observer is not just the horizontal speed here. It's not just the horizontal distance here. So that speed or that distance is actually given by this hypotenuse here. So if we take this to be our leg of our right triangle and this another leg of our right triangle, then this is the hypotenuse mm -hmm. of that right triangle. And we need to get how fast that speed or rather that distance is changing so we first write d squared equals so the length of this horizontal distance is 9 plus 5 times the number of seconds elapsed so 9 is because that's the initial distance and 5d because 5 is the speed at which the observer is moving and t that is the time elapsed. So after five, after t seconds, the observer would have run by five t. So the total distance from the total horizontal distance from the speaker would be nine plus five t.
And so that's why we put that there. And the vertical distance is not changing, so that remains 12. So that's 12 squared. Now we are looking for this quantity dd over dt. This is the speed at which this red line, this red length is changing. So to do that, we just differentiate both sides of this equation, the Pythagorean theorem. We just differentiate that with respect to t. So on this side, we get this. On this side, we get this. So we notice that this one just goes away because it's a constant. And the derivative of this with respect to t is just 2 times this times the derivative of this, which is 5. If we try to solve for dd over dt, in this case, let's just call that d prime for briefness. And then we still have this, the 2s cancel, and we just move this d into the denominator. So now we, we have this. And we can find d. So at time t equals 0, this is when the observer is 9 meters away from the source in the horizontal distance. That's the horizontal distance, 9 meters away from the source. That hypotenuse is actually equal to this one, where t is just replaced with 0. So if we replace t with 0, what we get is 9 squared plus 12 squared. And for me, I find that uh, factoring 3 here would be easier. So I factor out 3 squared first, and then the 3 squared, the remaining, the remaining 3 squared is still there and here I have a 4 squared remaining and so 3 squared plus 4 squared and the square root of that that's a famous Pythagorean triple we get 5 here so 3 5 so my speed how fast this hypotenuse is changing is 3 times 5 divided by so or rather that is the divisor of this bit here. So we now have this d, that's 3 times 5, and in the numerator we still have 9 plus 0 because d is 0, then we multiply it by 5, and the 5's cancel, it's 5 here, and we have 5 here, and the 3 in the denominator remains, and we have 9 in the numerator, so 9 divided by 3 is just 3. So now we have 3 meters per second as our speed here. So we just substitute the value that we got. So Vs is 330, Vs 330, then we had U as 3, and we had the speaker the, or the source frequency as 660 hertz. Now 330 over 333 can be reduced to 110 over 111, we just cancelled 3. And I don't want to compute this by hand, by long division, because um, it doesn't look nice. So what I do is I think of other things that I can compute easily. But I have to be careful because the choices given, the numbers in the choices are actually close. So I cannot just do some rough estimation. So I have to be a little bit more careful. In this case, what I do is I notice that 110 over 111 is greater than if I subtract 1 from the numerator and the denominator. So 109 over 110. And then I subtract 1 again, 108 over 109. Again, this is less than the number to the left of it. And then I notice that that also means that 99 over 100 is less than this number. Okay, so this is a general property of fractions. If you just subtract 1 from the numerator and the denominator, the number you get is actually less than the original number. But now I know this, so what I can say is that my f, which is equal to this, this is actually greater than the f if I replace this fraction with 99 over 100. And so I get this expression. And I like this because this is easy to compute, because 99 over 100 is the same as 1 minus 1 over 100. And I can compute 1 over 100 of f of s easily or f sub s easily. So f sub s here is 660, 1 over 100 times f sub s is 660 over 100, which is 6.6. .6. And again, the f and the greater than, it's kept, they're kept here. So 
I just have to compute this and 660 minus 6.6 .6 is actually 653.4 and so I now know that my f my new f must be greater than 653.4 and also in the choices the only choice that satisfy this that satisfies this, this inequality is this 653 hertz and we can eliminate the other choices that are also greater than 653.4 because they are also greater than 660 and we know that the new frequency must be less than 660 because it's a plus here meaning we have a denominator that is greater than the numerator and so the resulting the resulting fraction fraction must also be smaller than 660 and so this is the only possible answer among the choices if you learned something new today please help my channel by clicking the subscribe button and the bell for the notifications see ya